Hi again then guys, and welcome to of course another movie review here on HSG, and those of you who have been around on the channel since it was called SHM, especially way back in the day, will probably remember that I used to really love, really love, finding these hidden gem movies within horror. Usually monster films, sometimes just horror in general, ones which nobody talks about. Maybe they were badly marketed, maybe they couldn't afford, you know, billboards or adverts, it was just word of mouth kind of stuff, and for whatever reason the word of mouth just didn't get out enough. Something like Splinter is a perfect example, even this one, Harbinger Down. There are various others like that too. One of my prime examples, and probably my favourite example, is Black Mountainside, which of course I reviewed on the channel, I even did a full movie reaction to it, which you can watch here as well. In fact, you'll be able to click here on screen and see it at the end of the video. But this, I'm so happy to say, is another one of those occasions. Because this horror movie is another one of my underappreciated gems. And it actually has some commonality with another really, really forgotten gem that I've reviewed as well from 2005 called Isolation. It's an Irish film board movie, I believe, if I recall correctly. It's got Essie Davis in it from The Babadook. Um, I believe Ruth Nager is in it as well. She's in, of course, a number of TV shows. And it's a stacked cast. However, it's a gritty, grimy, depressing-looking little British horror, and I love it for it. It really suits the tone. This movie has a lot of that kind of vibe, just this atmosphere of almost depressing greyness, just dread through the whole film. The tone, the music in particular, which has some similarities to things which I cannot mention until we get into the spoiler portion, as you can see over here, but just everything in this movie, although there are certainly plenty of familiar tones and aspects to it in various subgenres of horror even i really loved how they all came together because i am a proponent that just because a movie is similar to something else that doesn't mean that it's a copycat and it doesn't mean it's a waste of time to watch it there are plenty of movies which were inspired by alien there are plenty of movies which are inspired by the thing that doesn't make those movies bad. Unless they're a straight-up rip-off, some of them are actually very good. I mean, look at the horror-in-space tone that something like Event Horizon has. Clearly inspired by Alien to some degree, but at the same time, not really anything like it. That is how you do inspiration well. Stuff like with The Thing. There are loads of other movies which have those kind of creature feature vibes, but they're not mimicking the story. That is what I would say about this movie as well. There are a number of overt nods. You know, there's some wallpaper in the movie, which is a, a clear nod to another movie, stuff like that. But I loved how this movie came together. It was actually directed by, I've written down the name here, uh, Lee Cronin. And the movie only came out last year. It's a 2019 film, as you saw from the title of the video. And it's got decent scores, but it's one of those films which, again, kind of suffers from its own marketing. The cover art isn't particularly impressive, and even the name of the movie is kind of ho-hum, the hole in the ground. I mean, it sounds like a, you know, a 50s <laughs> B-movie, and although some people probably say that's appropriate for this film, I actually think it deserves better than that. Now, I don't know what I would have called it, but unfortunately certain names just don't really catch you as much, and to me this is one of those. Now, I believe I already mentioned in the video you can find this on Netflix. If I didn't, then you can find this on Netflix, <laughs> so I would definitely recommend doing that. And the essential plot and the story, I mean, chances are you already know if you're watching the review, but it's about a mother and her son, single-parent family in Ireland. Uh, she's recently moved into this new place that she's renovating, and she finds this sinkhole behind the house. Massive sinkhole. And for those who don't know what a sinkhole is, you know, do a Google search. They're pretty fascinating things and pretty scary sometimes as well. Basically, a recess will open up under the ground and suddenly everything will fall through. I believe one opened up in Japan a couple of years ago in the middle of the road. Um, but she finds one of these. Thankfully, it's not in like the middle of a road or something like that. It's in, it's in the woods. But she starts to become suspicious of this sinkhole and the effect that it might be having on her son. And basically the movie progresses using that catalyst to ramp up the kind of dread, the kind of creepiness, which this movie really does well. And my two favourite things about the movie's tone are actually the kind of grey, depressing layer of just 
emotional filth that the movie has, to put it that way. It's just very bleak. But also that layer of creepiness, which builds more and more through the film. There are certain scenes where nothing happens. And there are no jump scares either. I'm not saying there's no jump scares in the whole film, but in, in these particular scenes, it could be just a person looking out of a window or looking at something, or even somebody at night time looking through the trees with a camera, or with a, a torch, I should say. It was so well shot. It's a gorgeous looking movie. The soundtrack is fantastic. And as I said, I'm going to get more into the soundtrack in the spoiler part. But overall, to sum up my spoiler free thoughts, if you are a fan of movies such as, and I've got to be careful here because even these could be spoilers. If you're a fan, let's put it this way if you're a fan of the kind of movies that I review, you'll love this movie. And that's about as far as I can go. Now, to get into spoiler talk, so of course leave now if you haven't seen the movie, check out the film, maybe you could come back and watch the rest of this video and see if you agree with what I'm saying. To get into that spoiler talk, this movie actually reminded me of probably maybe four movies put together, different elements of each of them. And I like the fact that each of the movies that it reminds me of are very different to each other. The overall tone and the vibe and the story reminded me very much of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Or just Invasion. Especially back in the, I think it was the 70s one. Which I, I love. Great movie. Then there were elements of the thing. Because it's a mimicking creature that hides in the shadows and imitates people in order to blend in. Very much like the thing once you actually think about it. The third thing that it reminds me of was actually a very undervalued movie. Which I've reviewed on the channel called The Burrowers. Which is a cowboy horror movie. Sounds goofy, but trust me, it's one of the darkest movies you'll ever watch. It's very bleak. Um, similar to this, especially as you get toward the end of the film with those creatures underground. Very similar, in fact. And the fourth one is a little bit of The Shining as well. And, of course, what I mentioned earlier on is The Wallpaper, which is a clear homage to The Shining. But more so than that, it really is reminiscent of the kind of Shelley Duvall and her son, I don't recall the actor's name, in The Shining except it's almost like the other way around. Like she's suspicious of the kid instead of being suspicious of Jack Nicholson. And I think that that plays in really well. I think that the mother's acting was fantastic. I think that the son's acting is excellent, especially for a kid. All of the people in this movie do a great job. That older couple, you know, the weird woman and the dad who reminds me of that guy from Game of Thrones. <laughs> but uh, they were all great. They all had great little roles, even if they were just a supporting role, they did a great job of it. They felt like real people, they don't look like these glammed up people, they feel like real people. Kind of reminded me of the Babadook in that sense as well, where it kind of has that similar bleak tone, mother and son relationship, with something getting in the way of that. Um, except that this movie doesn't so much have that bluish hue that the Babadook has, this one's got more of a, I don't even know, maybe like a, a really dark green hue to it which I guess would be a bit stereotypical for Ireland, but <laughs> but it works. Maybe a grey hue, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, maybe some stuff that I didn't like as much about the movie, stuff that I did like. To mention the score, as I was talking about earlier on, the score actually reminded me of The Thing as well. Because if you go back and listen to it again, unless you noticed the first time, which you might have, the score, at least at certain points, is like... like the thing i mean that is the thing's score except it's just slightly different timing so i love that i don't know if that was deliberate but it seemed like it might have been another homage and as far as stuff which i didn't like um i can't actually think of much that i didn't like i think that the effects were great when you saw like the reflection of the kid in the mirror in the basement, that was effective. When the kid's throwing his mum around, that's effective. I loved the imagery of the heads being buried, the older woman and then his mother. Um, that actually reminded me of another recent movie on Netflix called Cargo with Martin Freeman. Very similar. In fact, some characters in that movie do the exact same thing, even though it's <laughs> nothing like the same kind of movie. And And as far as stuff which I didn't like, I can't really think of anything, to be honest. 
I can understand why some people might feel that the movie is maybe a little bit slow. You know, you have to have a certain appetite for certain genres of horror. This isn't like a non-stop Freddy vs. Jason kind of ADD journey. It's a movie which takes its time, develops the relationship more, the emotions, and I love it for that. But beyond the beyond the, the pacing, I don't really know what other issues people could primarily have that I might understand. Maybe the similarities to other films could be an issue for some people, but it wasn't for me. Because as much as it was like those other films that I mentioned, it still wasn't copying any of them. I mean, overall, the closest thing to it would be Invasion of the Body Snatchers, just in terms of the concept. But even then, it's nothing like it. It's a completely different way that the story plays out. This isn't a global thing, it's just a mother and son. And another thing that I loved about it was that it takes this really small, single relationship between a mother and son, doesn't feel the need to actually put the father in there, which I think was a good choice. He's referenced and mentioned, but never actually in the story that I can remember. But also the fact that they have this small relationship breaking down, but then juxtaposed with a big house and a huge amount of land that they live on. In these big empty open roads and this huge forest and this massive sinkhole. It's like every situation that this mother and son are in, predominantly the mother of course, is massive. These big wide open spaces and yet the story about them is so small within those spaces. I really like that kind of visual storytelling. So yeah, great soundtrack, great vibe, loved the cinematography, it was a gorgeous looking film. And it managed to be bleak, but in a way that you can't take your eyes off of. So yeah, this this really is a hidden gem, I think. It's one of my favourite movies that I've checked out on Netflix so far. Of all of the ones that I've watched, it might be the one that I'd recommend the most, in fact, for the kind of people who enjoy the movies that I love here on the channel. And I know there are plenty of you, you know, The Thing, Splinter, Harbinger Down, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, even The Blob, Rubber, all these kind of like lesser known, less appreciated horror films, which sometimes vary between psychological horror and creature feature or monster horror. But uh, yeah, stick around on the channel. In a couple of days, I'm going to be doing, speaking of monsters, a review for The Monster from, what year? 2016. So yeah, stick around for that, of course. If you are new to the channel, be sure to slap that notification bell because YouTube does a awful job of showing people new videos. And of course, until next time, I will see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.